From teaching thousands of students, I've learned there's really two kinds of DJs, those that use cues to map their tracks in advance and those that simply get to know their tracks through playing them. And by mixing without cue points, they instinctive, instinctively feel their way into each mix. Now, in many ways, mixing without cues is a lot closer to how DJs traditionally used to play, as back in the day, you couldn't set cues with vinyl. Yet these days, with all the latest technology, it seems cue points are playing a much bigger role in modern day DJing, and they really open up the door to creative mixing. Now, in this video, I'm gonna explain the different types of cue points, how each cue point is used, and the advantages of using cues. Firstly, there are three types of cue points, temporary cues, memory cues, and hot cues. Now, first off, temporary cues can be set as easily as hitting pause and then cue on the beat that you wanna save, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, these cues are not permanently saved, so as soon as you load a new track onto the player, they're gone, okay? But they can be handy when mixing on the fly. So, for example, Let's say you load up a track, okay, and it has this really long intro with perhaps ambient sounds and no beat, right? You may simply want to skip to where the beat kicks in and start mixing from, where, you know, where the track starts to get good. Now, I'm going to show you this in two different things. I want to show you it on a CDJ, and I'm all about also making comparisons between club equipment and a controller. So... Stick around, this is actually pretty cool. So I know this sounds basic, the temporary cue, but what I'm about to go into now actually answers a much asked question I've got, and that is why when hitting pause it goes doom. So I just, I wanna show you something quickly. So let's say this track here, um, okay. It's got a little beat, but it might be, it's pretty faint. It might be hard to beat match that. So what I might do is I might fast forward to where it kicks in. Now to do that, I can hold down search, and I can also use the jog wheel, go find the beat as well. So let's say now, Let's see where it's kicking in. Yep. Okay, bang. And I hit pause. Now hear that. Okay. I'll take it off that for a sec. Okay. Let's just get rid of that. Okay. People are like, oh my God, why does it do that? Why does it do that? So I'll just take a moment to explain that quickly. So I've been DJing for a long time, okay? And even like post vinyl. So I was in the vinyl stages, right? The end of the vinyl days and right there sort of at the birth of the CDJ 1000, okay? And when the CDJ 1000 hit the club scene or whatever, it was the first kind of deck that kind of read CDs, which I'll be honest with you, CDs did not have the feel vinyl did, but it was a little bit more convenient with carrying around large bodies of music. See, for instance, on a CD, I could burn like about 20 tracks or something, but with vinyl, I might have one vinyl and it might be one track on there that you like. So you're carrying around hundreds of vinyl and when traveling interstate, it's kind of a bit of a pain in the ass. So with CDs at least, I could have like a little folder of music, you know, travel easily and, you know, it was a bit more convenient to use. But when using CDs, see the CDJ 1000s with the industry standard, DJ I mean, 800 in the middle, and that was in clubs, every single club for about a decade, okay? So you turn up with your CDs, but with CDs, you don't get the visuals that you get now. So there's no way you could see the beats here. You didn't have that, that wasn't even an option. And this little waveform down the bottom, well, it's loading as the song's playing and you know, so there wasn't a lot of visuals. So let's say a track had an ambient intro and I wanted to start from a certain place. I'd have to go and then actually hit pause. Now I'll do all this in my headphones, but then when I, that sound, okay, that sound. So I'll go back, I'll do it again. So let's say I'll go back, I'm listening to this in my headphones, trying to cue up the beat that I want to mix from. And let's say I'm listening for it in my headphones, no real visuals, and I'm like, there it is, I hit pause, and then by listening, I could be like, ah, and you find the beat that way. You're like, and that's what that's for, that sound. You're like, oh, and you find it, go back a little bit before it. So that's the actual beat, tiny little bit before it. That's what they say, right there, hit Q. Then I've set my temporary Q, and then it's like, okay. You see, and it's actually pretty cool. So that's, that's actually what that's for, and you couldn't actually do memory cues back in the days. There wasn't hot cues. That's pretty much what it was, okay? Now let's say it's actual vinyl. Then what I do, so I'll just show you that again. So what I do is I go back, and say I wanna find the beat, so I listen. I go bang, go find it, a little bit before it, hit Q, and now I've saved a temporary Q point. Now with vinyl, it wasn't about that. With vinyl, just to show you that quickly, so I've got in vinyl mode, you hit pause, you don't hear that, right? So what happens is, so I've got vinyl mode, you go and find it, and it's more like, and you let go, okay? It was different. So you go find the beat in your headphones, you're like, there it is, and 
then you hold the vinyl and you're like one, two, three, four, bang, and you hit that edge. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. Okay, so now, okay, so that's explaining that sound. That's how to set a temporary cue point on here. But then when we move across to a controller, I've got the same song loaded just, you know, to show you a point of difference here. But now I can't fast forward on here. So you can click on the waveform, but if you don't want to touch your computer, you can always hit shift and move your jog wheel, take it up to where the beat, and there it is. So I'm there and I'm listening. But now when I hit pause, it's not, you know, so what you do is it's more of a visual thing these days. With the controllers, you can always see your computer. So I hit pause, drag it onto the beat that I want to set the cue then hit Q and you'll see that little yellow temporary Q point. Now if I was to load another song that's gone, okay? So there's that point and then, you know. Now to be honest, if I knew that that's where I was gonna play it from again, I would go and turn that temporary Q point into a memory Q. And how I can do that is just actually hit memory. Now, okay, this is another comparison between club equipment and controllers. So especially on Pioneer Gear, you've got your looping at your top and you've got your memory Q call buttons here, okay? So on the same on the controller here, I've got the exact same looping and then memory Q call buttons. But on here, I can actually set memory, but on here, they've applied the memory to save it actually to one of the Q call buttons. How I know that is, if you ever look at the controllers and you see like a little gray box, that means it's a shift feature. So if I want to save that to a memory cue here, I go shift, hit that button, and then it puts a memory cue point on there. And that means every single time I load the song, that memory cue point is gonna be saved there. And what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna talk about the advantage of using memory cue points to pretty much map in and out points to assure that when you mix in, everything lines up. So here's the thing. If I'm mixing without cues, and don't get me wrong, mixing without cues is a lot of fun, especially for the really deep drawn out genres like techno and some melodic house and techno. But I'll be honest, let's say I'm mixing melodic house and techno and I'm like, oh, that bit would have been really good there. That's the advantage of pre-mapping your songs with cue points. And don't get me wrong, like if I'm playing around at home, I love mixing without cues, but quite often when I turn up to play like a live event, I like stuff lining up and putting together world-class sets and that's the advantage of setting cue points. And so with memory cues, you can mark in and out points and kind of map your tracks. So I'm gonna give you a few examples of that now, but let's go have a quick look. Let's say this track, for instance, okay, I'll load it up and then you can actually see all those red dots there, they're my memory cues and I can actually then index through the memory cues there. So that might be to jump in, replace the first drop maybe, that might, you know, different points within the track. So let's bring that back for one sec. So for instance, let's say you're getting a little bit more creative with your mixing, okay? And instead of just doing standard mixing and hoping for the best, okay? Maybe you wanna do double drops or replace the drop or even do mashups on the fly. Now, trust me, right? All these styles of mixing involve parts of each track lining up and without cue points, like sure, you can do it, right? But it becomes a little bit harder, right? So, and let's say you're playing live, okay? Trust me, right, cue points can really serve a purpose when it comes to playing the best parts of each track. And as long as you're willing to take a little bit of time preparing each track in your DJ software, honestly, setting cues can take your sets to the next level. So if you want to play like the best parts of each track, you could go into your DJ software, find the best parts you, you want to play, but instead of setting cue points on the main sections, for instance, on the first beat of the drop, what I'll do is I would set cue points a little bit before my, my mix point, maybe a phrase, maybe two phrases, maybe sometimes four phrases, depend on like earlier, depending on how much you want to draw out your transition. But by setting your cue points before your mix points, you give yourself more time to kind of beat match and mix in artfully and then everything lines up. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples right now of mixing in early and then the main parts of the track lining up. But if you want to know where to set cue points, check out my set cue points like a pro video in my free mini course. I'm going to put the link in the description below as that video it's going to up level your skills quickly. It's going to share my method with you and it's going to give you immediate results. Okay, so let's just do an example. Now I'll start off, I'll do kind of like a standard one, but let's say I'm mixing this track for instance, okay? So I load that and you'll see that I've got a cue point a little bit further in and what that means is maybe I'm just cutting to the chase. Some of these house songs could have minutes, sometimes two minute intros. And sometimes if you're mixing without cues and you're just waiting for something to happen, 
This more like goes finds, you know, like places where stuff happens and keeps it a little bit more exciting. So in this track, I've kept it straightforward for the sake of this video, but I've got an in point, which I could start mixing from. But then the second cue is where I could start mixing in my new song, and that could be back from the chorus. I actually go in and explain this a little bit more in depth, actually, in the How to Mix Tech House video. It's that kind of method, putting in a cue point and giving yourself time to mix in, like mix in earlier. So let's say this one's playing. Okay. Okay, cool. I never look at the lines, man. I try not to. So now I'm just, I beat match, I've got time, I'm mixing in over the end. By the way, this is EQ mixing. I break this down massively in my course. Okay, but now I see it drops off and my new song will kick in. I know that because of my cue point method. Now it's how long you're playing together for. That again, I've taught that in my course too. Probably go get it out before this one kicks in. And again, I'm trying not to look. That's another thing I teach. Maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll add an effect. Maybe a spin back, why not? Okay, now that one kicks in. But now, let's keep it going, let's do another one. So let's say now, how about I, okay, let's load up this song. I've got a few options here with my cues. So I use my memory cues to kind of index through, and I know what they mean, and you will too, if you download, I'll oh, get my course, my free one, right? Set cue points like a pro. But I know what these mean to me. So how about I go and put, you know what? I'm gonna go put that, this bit here, that's actually like a vocal, I know the song. I'm gonna put like a double drop, put that vocal on top of this chorus and then play them together. And with EQ work, I can make that work. Well, let's hope I can. I think I can. Okay. Don't look to beat match. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll go for a bass swap. That means I'll put my new song on top, I'll make a commitment. And then again, how long do you plan to get it for? That's something you have to learn. You have to really kind of like, learn to kind of like, I guess read the waveforms, feel the tracks. I could go for now. I think I'll just put it low in the mix. That's me playing it safe, looping. Again, stuff all told in the course. Maybe I can go for Harvard. Okay, that's just pulling around. Man, with cues, seriously, I could just keep going, you know, just keep going, keep going, keep going. I love it. Okay, so let's now move to hot cues. Now, hot cues allow you to jump around the track real time, and by doing so, you can effectively skip down parts of the track and even repeat certain parts of each track. And you can also use hot cues like to highlight certain part of words and maybe repeat certain words and effectively do remixes on the fly, which honestly can be really cool when it comes to being more creative behind the decks and a lot of fun. Now, initially though, hot cues could only be found on controllers and the older Pioneer gear only has memory cues. Okay, so memory cues are compatible with all club gear but any DJ gear that you buy these days, brand new, club gears and controllers, they all have hot cues. And in many ways, people consider hot cues to be, you know, where you get really get creative with your DJing. Now, like memory cues, you can map your tracks in advance in your software. But when mapping hot cues, you can approach it in different ways. So for instance, you could set hot cues on the main parts of the track. So for instance, on the first beat, perhaps the first beat of the verse, perhaps the first beat of the chorus, perhaps the first beat of the build up. And let's say you want to avoid a down part of the song, like it goes into a breakdown, 
you could then hit a desired hot cue and just keep the energy moving. And just speaking about that side, like using them to play the main parts of the song, let me give you an idea of how you might do that practically. This would be a good place to start. So let's pretend, right, that you want it, you like mixing, it's gonna be easier to mix from the start of the song because you've usually got an intro to work with as opposed to if you're mixing the second half of the song and using that chorus to mix in, it can sometimes get a bit messy. Now I can show you how to do it using advanced EQ work, that's all in my course, like I love that. But, um, but what happens is, Let's pretend that you love the second drop, okay? You wanna mix the beginning of the song, but you like the second drop better, but you don't really wanna play the full song. What you could do is you could go put a hot cue on the second drop, and then as your new song, you've mixed in your new song, it's building up to go to the first drop, and then at that first beat of that drop, you hit the, sec you hit the hot cue, and it takes you straight to that second drop. Now, I'm gonna jump around the track now. I won't actually do that example, I just think a little bit more creative, but. That's one way of using them. And then stick around because then I'll show you a little bit of like, you know, highlighting words and using the track, using hot cues to kind of like, I guess, create a build up, tease in a new song. So yeah, stick around. But um, let's show you jumping around now. This one here, I, this is actually a really good mix to look at for the advantage of setting cue points. And I did a mix a few weeks back, um, how to mix new disco, okay? And that's, you'll see, right? It's a combination of using memory cue points, like that standard mixing, like making sure parts line up, and then actually using hot cues more to kind of like jump around the track real time. And I did a whole bunch of stuff in there, it was cool. But this actual transition comes from that. And what happened was I had a track playing on this side and I'm going into my new song, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to drop a vocal on top of the chorus here. So what I did, if you have a look at this second cue I've got here, oh, that cue there, see here, this is in the middle of the song, okay? And I like that, I wanted to drop that in on a chorus. And the beauty of playing that bit there was, I'm playing it from in the breakdown, in that second verse, and to be honest, there's less bass there, which means it's not gonna be that messy and I can put it on top of a chorus where there's no, no singing going on, right? So I've got that, but then I had that playing, but then to be honest, then that, if I was just playing it from that point of the song, it was just gonna start building up and I didn't want that because I essentially did miss the main bit of the song. So I was using that, playing that breakdown, but then once I've done that for a bit, I then I, they've heard it a few times and then I'll jump and then I'll play the main bit of the song. So how about I give you an example now, but this first example right now of using hot cues, it's just like more about using hot cues to play certain parts and kind of, yeah, arrange the song in a way that suits you and, you know, playing the best bits of the song. That's really what cues kind of are, about playing the best parts of the track, really. So let's give you an example of that. Okay, cool. So that's just like something I did. I'm just saying you can use hot cues in that way. And then if you look at my waveform here, right, then I can actually use that memory cue coming up to mix in, come in over the end of the chorus, drop something cool in there. Again, what you drop in there, that can come down to pre-mapping, okay? So that's cool, but now let's move forward. Let's have a look now at another way to use hot cues and that's like just to highlight kind of words and maybe tease in tracks. Now, I've chosen a fairly easy example. I wanna kind of make all this stuff accessible to you. And again, um, in my closet, I kind of go to the next level, but um, let's, let's just check it out. So um, this one here, I think if you're messing around with hot cues, it's a really good one to kind of practice on. Okay, and that means I go here, I load up the track and um, here you can just put them on words. Have a listen. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not a bad one to start with. It's just clean words, isolated words. You can even do isolated melodies, create your own patterns, do whatever you like. But let's say I'm gonna create a sort of pattern with this. And even though I'll keep it fairly simple, but one thing just to note when playing around with hot cues, and that is 
you, if you're doing a pattern, right, you probably want to keep that pattern going for at least eight bars. If you're just being completely random, it just sounds strange. You know what I mean? So if you notice, I might do just simple pattern to start with, then I might make it slightly different, but I only change the pattern after the phrase length, okay? So try and feel, kind of do what the artist did. Because if you listen to an artist and producer when they write a song, if they've got a pattern, they're, they're, they're usually kind of repeating the pattern, okay? So keep that in mind. Try and when DJing, bring music production elements to the way that you play, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, I'm just having a bit of fun here. So um, I'll start basic, okay? And then I'll develop it. And then you can start bringing it in. Okay, cool. Man, uh, maybe I should have rehearsed that a little bit, but that, you get the idea. You can, and to be honest, if you put a bit of time into that, you can get kind of good. Like I remember, I haven't done that one for a while, but ages ago I was messing around with that and you gave it half an hour. See, this morning I just sort of did it once, but because um, I'm just having fun with you guys. But you kind of, let's say if I was performing live, I could put together a little bit of a routine and you can see routines. And in my course, I talk about how to actually build routines, how to actually kind of like always play the best bits and which parts are what and I've got a whole bunch of transitions. So I'll link that in below, but um, you know, um, DJing, so much fun. So all in all, let's say you're new to DJing, mapping your tracks with cue points 100% has its advantages. And another advantage by doing so is you can more easily identify where are the best places to mix, right? And before long, you're gonna to start to see similarities in the waveform and how tracks are made. And what this later means is if you move into mixing without cues, you're gonna be able to take better educated guesses on the best places to mix in your new track and how to best make your transition sound natural. But really one piece of advice, okay, and that is, I know it's really tempting. Just say you're a beginner DJ, you start busting out the hot cues, you think it sounds really cool and you just start messing around, okay? but Without core foundations, it can sound really messy. And even though it's really fun for you, it can be a little bit unbearable for the people around you, okay? So put it this way, right? When teaching, I know from years and years of experience, it's about teaching people in a sequence. And I feel performance features, they come once you have super solid foundations. And personally, like as a teacher, the first thing I have to do is get my students to a stage that they're thinking less when they're playing, and that means conditioning core foundations. And before long, right, my students are at the stage that they can make all their transitions sound amazing. And then from there, we can start building on like performance features, which in my opinion, let's say like effects, they should be considered a little bit like icing on a cake. And let's say your foundations, your cake is not strong, not even the tastiest of icing will be able to save it. Anyway, if you feel like you'd benefit from a more organized approach, I'll link in my course in the description below. There's currently a sale on my complete package, which takes beginners or people with some experience from the bedroom and into clubs. And if you have no interest at all in playing in clubs, and this is more of a creative outlet for you, it doesn't matter, okay? I am all about just teaching, man, I've done it. I use it as a creative outlet too, DJing, it's a source, man, you know, anyway. Okay, anyway, one thing quickly, a quick announcement time. Two of my long-term students who have been running the, like streaming for us, right? 
They've now gone on and they've taken the plunge to launch a house and techno event in Stoke, Central England called Inception. Now it's launching on November 27th and the lineup consists of all my students, so nine club ready DJ school students who have previously proven themselves on our streams. And you know, people are traveling from all over the world to attend this party and they've already sold out their early bird pre-sales, man. I'm like, man, I wish I could be there personally. So um, anyway, for more info, um, check out the Club Ready DJ School Instagram as I'm going to be making announcements about this party in the weeks to come. So, um, but anyway, if you're from the UK and let's say you want to be involved, you want to get some gigs, you know, my advice, get down there, okay? Introduce yourself to Chris and Billy, all right? They're the organizers of the event. Show your support. That's how to get in. Anyway, hope you found some value in this video, okay? And if you did, please show your support to help the channel grow. And um, thanks again for tuning in. I'm messing around with a new space at the moment. I've still got some work to do. So uh, I know it looks a little bit different, but um, it's not quite done, but I'm working on something because I've kind of moved recently up near Byron Bay. So it's, it's very exciting times and I've got my Byron Bay DJ school too. But um, anyway, Club Ready is really where my focus is. And um, yeah, if you're not already a student, you know, maybe consider that too. Anyway, welcome to the tribe. See ya.